Friday again. Uh, sorry about missing last Friday, but I've been doing a lot of house maintenance, repairs, fence repairs, a lot of different things. So um, I can't guarantee I'm going to do a video every Friday here. I might skip one here or there as I try to catch up with things. So um, a lot of little things I've been doing in the shop, projects here or there. So there's not much to share. Um, but first, if you have this kind of vice, I will show a little thing about it that you may not know. And then I'll take you over to the bench. I've been finally tearing apart and rebuilding my first mill from ground up. So I'll show you the constant force system that I'm doing. I think I showed it once before. And in that little segment, I'll show the face mill that I did a review or demonstrated before. For those of you who did pick it up, you're lucky because the price is going up on it. Because um, I already went through my first set of, well, I'm on, there's 10 inserts. I've already burned through four, both edges, flipping it over. I just installed the second set of four and I went to go and buy more. I bought them originally for 12. They're about 17 now. So I'll put a link in the description if you guys still want to pick up the face milk because boy, it takes material off real fast. Okay, hope you enjoy. And again, I may not be on the air next Friday. How well can something be machined on the second mill? Well, I'll show you. This is one uh, one of the soft jaws that was made on it, and you can feel the dust and dirt all over the place here. Junk I can see on it. Put this guy down there. Eh, it doesn't matter where I start, but and I love this indicator here. All right, so we come down to where close to zero. Ah, lock it. Zero it out. Come on, turn. Sorry about my hand. It's a little bit off of zero, but... So if I move this guy from side to side, you can see this horrendous uh, deviation, whatever you want to call it. Is that even moving? Not really. If I go front to back. So this is... Um, Somewhere is around a tenth, maybe. I guess I gotta pay attention to that needle. Yeah, that's about a tenth it's moving here. So it's pretty good. Um, we I just fell in the hole. There, get it off. So yeah, you can mill pretty good, uh, pretty accurate here, if you want, with the DROs and all that stuff. Yay. <laughs> Got to record this all over again because I didn't have the mic plugged in all the way. Okay, so the device in place. The angles here were slightly different, so I had to regrind the two plastic pieces here to get it up snug because I don't want chips going down in there. Um, old handle that I've been before did fix this handle. Uh, I've got thin brass washers in there because I don't like a lot of side play and just basically loctited the pin in place so it looks good but I don't like using that handle and so one of the little projects I did was make another one here because I'm tired of going from one side of the shop to the other wow that really pokes out a lot doesn't it I mean, really, whoa oh because I did that all right I may wind up, uh, I gotta take the socket out and get rid of the back half. It's still got the 3 8 head on it, so this doesn't go in all the way. Yeah, it works, but okay. So, um, set with this, got it squared up. I haven't run the end mill over the face yet because I still need to do the bar on the back of the mill to fix the tilt. And so once I'm vertical or straight, then I'll be doing that. But um, 
to do that plate you guys saw in the last video giant plate um, it was kind of funny because I needed a 14 inch by 5 inch quarter thick aluminum plate and I asked at the metal supply how much would that cost and they're telling me twenty six dollars well forget that so I go into the back where the scrap area is it was twice as long as this twelve dollars so now the problem is how do I deal with cutting it with a hacksaw I mean it doesn't fit in the wind bandsaw so can you kind of see real crooked edge but in the last video you saw me trying to clamp that thing using the traditional uh, clamping methods on the bed in the t-slots and I was having a hard time because I had it on the mini pallet and I've got two of them here I have no idea why I made a smaller one but and then a lot of people ask why this is here because it squares the material up when I have to but the problem I was having is you want to cut this edge but now the material is hanging off so I can't it, it's trying to find a hole to put the clamp in to do it and most of the time the material is all this way so that's all gone can't put a clamp here because that's the edge you want to cut so you saw and also because I don't have the travel in the Y axis I got to use the X axis so a little trick that I had just thought of or I don't know if you call it a trick oh yeah let me show this guy this was the original uh, jaw get this off of here for now this was the original jaw and you can see the aluminum jaws are just slightly bigger and it somehow it does make a big difference on here um, the height I can use the fourth set of parallels that I have because they're about this tall the fourth one so you can see I can just barely grab something if I have to do something real small so the aluminum jaws are great I love them uh, the ones on the other uh, vice hanging in there big time so and they've been used a lot but the I forgot all about this these holes and there's two holes here are for this you can get rid of this jaw and now clamp between here and here on this surface and it gives you a lot more let me tell you because if that thing was wide open I'm gonna have basically I can clamp six and a half inches and if I got rid of that jaw and that one and went back here now I'm gonna have eight just over eight inches eight and an eighth so I was thinking about making a giant <laughs> mini pallet that would go from here all the way over to here and so I'd have this whole surface here and it should be easier because I'm seems like I'm starting to get into bigger and bigger material to clamp so that would allow me to put this right I could probably yeah I don't know I'd have to just play with this and think about it but yeah I can now <laughs> would have the holes here so I can clamp and I'm thinking too when I do it I'm going to change the hole pattern. These were on half inch, I think. I need to, it's a lot of drilling and tapping, let me tell you. But yeah, they're one inch from center to center. Um, and then I think they wind up being, no, they're not a half inch across. Some place was, oh, half inch from row to row. Yeah. All right, so this row is a half inch from this row, half inch from this row but then they're all one inches so that would put this a half inch from the center line here so I'll rethink it and I probably want to start with them closer to the edge because right now yeah I'm half inch half inch from the edge uh, so I'll go to the scrap area but then now the problem is going to be if I have a huge piece how do I <laughs> square up the edges so I just wanted to share that um, what you can do here with another jaw had it all set up and completely forgot about it in the drawer lot of projects like I said both big and small one of them you know, I showed this guy it was a lot of fun making him and it's really cool I, I love this guy using it so I decided to make the 60 degree also 
super precise within a few seconds. So that was one project. It kind of small because it takes a while to lap and get them perfect. Um, the other project that's been days here is the first mill I bought five years ago. Didn't know anything, so I never took it apart and completely rebuilt it like I did the second mill. Um, so I'm making a new piston thing. This was the first guy, and it was a kick. Made him one of the first things that I made and made it using that spring thing for um, Z-head travel or whatever. And it did a pretty good job, I think. I don't know. Didn't have decent end mills. Was using just junk stuff. So, kind of sad retiring it, but it's served its purpose. What does this do? Oh, this goes on here this way. <laughs> I had to salvage the bolt off of this thing for whatever. So, um, been working on this. A couple of reasons why I wanted to do it. Uh, mill, sadly, desperately needed an overhaul. It's been used a lot. Um, first reason is this was the existent pistons that I had put in there and they stick you know, overnight when you come in you try to decompress it and it won't do it you have to compress it first and then decompress it and then it'll work fine for the rest of the day big irritant to me so I wanted to get rid of that and I put the um, extended rack in there so I've got more travel so these are the longer pistons um, this guy, four days worth of work, he's stuck in there to do this. Uh, originally I had started with just an end mill and it was taking forever, especially to remove all this material, because this is one piece. Probably could have made it two, but uh, same thing I did for the second mill. So decided to pull out the face mill. Boy, if you guys want to remove material, that does it in a hurry. Uh, you just have to stand back because the chips fly. So this was three, I think, yeah, four days worth of work, both uh, getting it to fit perfectly, taking the material away, and drilling and getting all the holes in the correct spots and tapping. Because, uh, yeah, I had to tap the back hole for the DRO stand. Um, this was another day's project and then another day's project just so I don't get burned out doing a whole bunch of things and you get burned out and you start making mistakes. Uh, this two pulleys and this guy was another day's project. So I'm almost done. I just need to do all the math to figure out where to put the pulleys here so that everybody lines up. You know, the pulleys like right above this guy and right above the head um, the head stock so everything's straight uh, so what else is going on here oh I did sign up this morning for the bar Z summer bash tried to make it last year but when I discovered it was already almost over it was a week away and I couldn't do it so other plans um, so, long drive, not looking forward to that, but I'll be there and meet all the other YouTube creators. That'll be fun. So that's just kind of an update here on where I am with this.